In this video, I will be showing you how I painted these patterns with gouache. Hi, my name is June and welcome to Property of Ink. For my January self-commission, I decided to challenge myself to do something I'd never done before. This list was pretty long, but I went with a pattern. To get myself started, I decided to set up a simple brief. Create a design for a coffee or tea mug. The theme of the project would be tea. And the challenge, create a pattern. You can find a lot of videos on YouTube teaching you how to make simple patterns. I decided to go based off of a video I saw for an artist on YouTube that I really, really love. Her name is Minnie Small. In case you'd like to check her out, I'll leave a link to her channel down below and a link to the video that I mentioned earlier. I started these as little doodles in my sketchbook, just random bits of this and that that I wanted to try. I had things like cinnamon sticks, star anise, um, sugar, hibiscus leaves, rosemary, lavender, orange peel. I decided to keep it simple seeing it was my first time making a pattern. I didn't want it to seem too complicated or overly crowded, so I decided to stick to simple things like lemon, um, hibiscus, ginger, things that would take up space but not seem overly crowded when put into a pattern together. For the first one, I went with hibiscus and lemon, which is my favorite tea. Originally, I had intended to have little heaps of sugar just sitting in a little mound, but it looked weird when I drew it out the first time, so I decided to go with sugar cubes. I started off this painting by doing underpaintings of the main colors, um, a light yellow for the lemons, a light red for the hibiscus, and yellow ochre for sugar cubes. I then went back and built up the colors, making them darker and thicker in areas. While hibiscus and lemon is my favorite tea, I have to admit that the second pattern was actually my favorite to paint. The 
icon that just popped up in the right corner is letting you know that there is an art description at the end of the video. So watch till the end to see that. Here I am trying to give the sugar a bit more dimension. It just looked so flat. I'm adding bits of sugar grains. Yeah, let's go with that. Sugar grains. And I sprinkle them all over the area to fill in the white space as well. By mixing a bit of green into the red color for the hibiscus, I was able to get a darker shade to use for the veins. And there's my favorite tea. It's from the brand Celestial. And the name of the tea is Lemon Zinger. Again, I started off with an underpainting of the main colors. Yellow ochre for the ginger. A shade of jade green for the lemongrass. Yellow ochre for the sugar cubes. And a really light shade of sap green for mint. To get the color for the ginger, I had to mix a lot of lemon yellow into yellow ochre. Um, and I mean a lot. Lemon yellow is pretty transparent, so it kept getting overpowered every time I would mix it into the yellow ochre. Eventually, it got to a point where there was so much lemon yellow that it started to show through. There should be a tip popping up just now. In painting the ginger, I was honestly at a loss of what to do. But after I added the, hmm, what would you call them? The stripes? I'm gonna go with the stripes. After I added the stripes to the ginger, it, it looks so much like a ginger. I put so much effort into getting the ginger to look like ginger that I feel that the lemongrass, the style that I painted the lemongrass and the mint leaves in just doesn't match the painting of the ginger. It looks semi-realistic.
My neighbor stopped by to share some fruit. These are called golden apples or June plums. It depends on where in the world you live. I'd forgotten that I was recording and sat outside chatting with the neighbor at least 20 minutes. I came back in and had completely forgotten what I was doing and decided I was gonna watch some YouTube videos and went looking for my phone. I was using it to record, so I came back out and it was there and I was like, yeah, that's what I was doing. We finally get into the actual pattern making part of it, which is to cut the painting. I start by cutting it in half the long way and then in half again for one of the pieces. My cutter didn't do a very good job. I don't know if I lost bits of paper in the cutting process or it's just that the cutter isn't very sharp, but these didn't line up when I was putting them back together. A few weeks passed in between me painting the first part of the pattern and cutting it into parts, and sticking it back together, and me drawing and painting the second part of the pattern. Um, college restarted for one, and between a full-time job and college in the evenings, I just didn't get a chance to sit down and paint. I did finally just went ahead and bought some light. The intent that when I get home from college in the night, I could do a bit of painting for an hour or so. Um, I got them out the box and that's about it. They are at least out of the box.
I apologize that you can't see the red pencil that I'm sketching in. Um, I didn't notice it wasn't showing up until after I was re-watching the video. I'll try to sketch a little darker for next time. Or just use a normal lead pencil. I never break away. I started out painting the two together to put in the colors that are the same in both so that I wouldn't have to remix the same colors for a second time later on in the painting process. So you will see me putting in like the sugar cubes, um, the base coat for the ginger, bits of sugar grains all over the counter. Like I said, these are done a few weeks apart and for nothing I could not recall what I did with the swatch cards. I usually always make swatch cards, especially if I know it's going to be a long painting that might take a few days. And sometimes if I love a color palette, it's nice to be able to save it for use another time. But I honestly, honestly have no idea where these color swatch went. I'm currently in the process of packing to move. So it's a possibility it got packed into one of many boxes. To unpack all the boxes I've already packed, to go looking for the swatches, it's just, I'm too tired for that. I also couldn't remember what painting style I used when I made these. The ginger I was fine with. I mean, ginger came out great. The lemongrass and the mint leaves. The second set just don't match the first set very well, but I did my very best to make sure that they looked vaguely similar. It truly is surprising how much your painting style or even your art style can change in just a matter of weeks. I haven't been doing as much painting, just little simple things like my, uh, my page of whales. I have a page of different types of whales and dolphins on one of my sketchbook pages. And every so often I'll just go and paint one of them or do little doodles in my sketchbook just to pass time when I'm bored and I don't want to edit a video and in that short space of three four weeks I think I improved well I definitely know I improved besides the fact that the elements I was painting were much smaller and simpler I knocked these off in like 20 minutes I think I might try this again with another theme. I haven't quite decided what theme yet. I know you're not too far behind. You make my dreams come true. And I only owe you when you promise that we never split with shadow through.
start off by saying I lack common sense during this entire process it did not occur to me that I could have first used the healing brush on the original painting fixed up the seams in between that and then duplicate the layers so please do as I say not as I do use the healing brush and make any edits to the image before you duplicate it so the process won't take you four hours as you can see I started off by duplicating the layer and adjusting them so that the seams fit together to create the ginger and the hibiscus and lemon Like I said, a, a lot of time could have been saved here and I wished at some point I had stepped back, looked at it and be like, huh, you know what would have been really easy? If I did this instead. That, that obviously didn't happen, so you get to watch me struggle. tool it allows you to take samples from one part of your image to edit another part of your image so I was able to use samples from one part of this hibiscus leaf to edit or and remove the seam that went through the leaf and covered it over perfectly it it does take a bit of time to get used to it and understand how it works, but after you've had a little go at it for a bit, you realize it's not as difficult as it pretends to be. Obviously, it's going to be easier to peel over parts of the image that are just one solid color, whereas it's gonna, it was a lot more difficult trying to edit the areas that had the ginger and the hibiscus and the lemons. Some of them I actually had to go in and repaint. Not like large areas, just some places where the patterns were just not the same or matched any other part of the ginger. So there's some parts where I did have to repaint in that. After I finished stitching it together, I tried to do some adjustments to the color. Um, for some reason, I had a seam going down the middle and the left half was lighter than the right half. I eventually just selected everything and painted in a flat white background. I'm thinking of going back in and removing the background so that it's transparent. That way, in the event someone would like to have a coffee mug that's say purple, which would look really good with these patterns on it, they can do so. Like I said, I truly did enjoy the process of making the patterns, and honestly, do intend to try this again later. Um, hopefully when I do so and I get to this point in Photoshop, common sense might be on my side. And 
and this is what the ginger, lemongrass and mint pattern looks like and here we have the hibiscus and lemon as promised here is a art prescription create a simple pattern the theme tea you are permitted to use any medium that you are comfortable with after you have completed the art prescription and you'd like to share it you can always tag me on instagram my instagram handle is down below in the description or if you would rather not share it on social media you can send it directly to my email which is also down below thank you again for watching don't forget to leave a like and comment down below and i will see you in the next one